climate change lie number seven exposed. The rate of warming is dangerous. Claim. The rate of warming is dangerous. Warming alarmists claim that the rate of warming is too fast for species or civilization to adapt. But is this true? Counterclaim. The current rate of warming is slow compared to past warming. In the first video of this series, we looked at the rather simple fact that the rate of projected warming, plus 3 degrees Celsius over the next century, is agonizingly slow. 0 0.00008222 degrees Celsius per day compared to the plus 10 degrees Celsius of daily temperature fluctuation in many cities around the world. We also saw that there have been episodes in the past where the entire planet experienced far faster rates of warming than we have in either the 20th century or the 21st century. Either the rate of warming is dangerous or it isn't. Because species can tolerate far faster rates of daily temperature change, there is no reason to assume that plus 3 degrees Celsius of warming over the next century is going to be too much for their delicate systems. Some people are delicate, but life in general is not so fragile. Those who constantly think in terms of victims and blame exaggerate so much that if they were to stub their toe, we wouldn't be surprised if they called for an undertaker for their tiny mishap. Corollary Claim but rapid warming will disrupt the patterns of life. There's a rhythm to life where birds hatch their eggs, insects provide food, and any change to the scheduling of global temperature could leave those chicks without their favorite food. But how much of a problem are we talking about? Fact. All changes throughout the history of Earth have been disruptive. What else is new? Climate change certainly isn't new. We've always had either warming or cooling, and cooling in our current ice age is far more dangerous than warming. Those who want to stop climate change are living in a fantasy delusion. Climate can never stop changing. Climate is a chaotic, nonlinear system that remains globally stable but locally unpredictable. But is the disruption too fast? Let's look at history to see. Can we find instances of deadly disruption from fast warming? The Younger Dryas Big Freeze ended with an abrupt spike in warming that coincided with the megafauna extinction at the start of the Holocene. Was warming the cause? That's unknown. One other hypothetical cause was that of meteor impact, like the Tunguska event in the early 20th century. Every other instance of abrupt warming was accompanied by many positive effects. Corollary claim. The rate of warming will cause famines that will destroy civilization. Warming will shift the optimum location for growing certain crops so that we won't be able to move farms in time. At least that's the claim by some warming alarmists. Fact. Warming has always resulted in greater prosperity for civilization. This graph shows major warming periods throughout the Holocene, our current interglacial in the current ice age. And this graph shows the last several interglacials, including the Holocene. The colder periods resulted in scarcity of food. The warmer periods resulted in greater abundance. Corollary claim. The current rate of warming is scary. Really? Fact. We've reached the peak of the modern warm period and gone past it. Earth has moved past the peak of the modern warm period and we're now starting to experience the next little ice age. Summer snowstorms, snow in the Sahara, record cold. The sun is going into another grand solar minimum. During the 20th century, the entire global warming amounted to about 0 0.9 degrees Celsius. But notice the root mean square trend line through the first 17 years of the 21st century, based on satellite data. It shows an increase of 0 0.197 degrees Celsius. If this trend were to continue at the same rate, it would amount to 1.159 degrees Celsius for the entire century, 
a very slight increase over the entire 20th century. But we can't do that. We should have learned our lesson by now that we can't take any current trend and extend it just because we feel like it. In the 1970s, the news media extended the cooling trend and predicted a new glacial period. That didn't last long because the Earth started to warm up shortly after that failed prediction. If you look carefully at the NOAA graph of global temperatures for 1880 to 2010, you'll notice a nearly 60-year cycle of ups and downs. If you look at Dr. Ole Humlum's graph of Holocene temperature proxies, you'll notice that there is a roughly 1,000-year cycle of ups and downs. And if you look at the temperature proxy data from Epica Dome C in Antarctica, you'll notice that there is a roughly 100,000-year cycle of ups and downs. Change is the only real constant in our global climate. So stop with the screwy idea that we're going to stop climate change. We're not. Because of this pattern of change, we're now due for some global cooling, just like it did from 1940 to 1970, despite the heavy increases in post-war CO2, and just like it did from 1880 to 1910, each a 30-year period. According to the cycle of major thousand-year warming peaks, we've already reached the natural warming peak for our modern period, and we're now preparing for some major cooling. Already the sun has started into its next grand solar minimum, where solar wind will decrease down to near nothing, allowing lots more cosmic rays in to produce more clouds, which will block more sun and plunge our world into another little ice age. If anything, the current rate of warming is alarming only because it is so slight, Periods of cooling tend to make it hard on civilization, with many more famines. Conclusion We're safe. Global warming is slow. Not only is global warming slower than during the 20th century, it's scheduled to reverse and to become a stronger cooling trend, like the end of the medieval warming period, which led to the Little Ice Age. We're also likely going to get an extension of the far larger cooling trend started 3,000 years ago, continuing the slow cooling trend of the end of the Holocene, very similar to the end of the Eemian interglacial about 110,000 years ago. Instead of shredding national sovereignty and Western industry to save the planet from beneficial warming, we need to prepare for the coming cold.